Welcome to We Rise, We Lead, We Celebrate, our 2022 award celebration. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, attending and our generous gala uh, sponsors and our NILA and Institute honorees. Um, what a great day it's been so far, hasn't it? Uh, I, I've had uh, great nuggets that I've taken away from all of the panels that I've uh, attended, and I hope you have too, and that's, that's what we hope for here. Um, after this presentation, I hope you'll join us out in the uh, Grand Assembly for our annual reception, and uh, I hope you'll join us tomorrow for our, our full gala celebration. Uh, drop in any time after dinner from 8 to 11 o'clock for music, dancing, and sweet and savory snacks. Not necessarily in that order. Um, thanks to the generosity of our friends at Dundon Advisors, LLC especially. Uh, each attendee will receive two complimentary drink tickets. And tickets to the gala are still available and they'll be available at the door. So I look forward to seeing you there. So uh, I want to uh, first acknowledge our wonderful uh, NILA and Institute staff uh, what a tremendous job they've done uh, today and uh, before today putting everything together. Uh, thank you so much to all of them. And somehow it seems that most of the time when we say thank you, they're not in the room. Uh, so when I have the opportunity now, I see Karen Maoki sitting here. Thank you so much. Ashley Westby, of course, on the podium here. Thank you so much. And Jeffrey, don't point at other people. Thank you, Jeffrey. <laughs> and of course, Leah Hopkin over here on the right. Thank you for everything that you've done. What a tremendous job. Is there any other staff here? Oh, there's Laura Flagel. Perfect timing. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, I have the, the privilege of uh, recognizing uh, the, uh, the folks here that we're here to honor uh, this afternoon who are retiring from the NILA board. Um, I want to acknowledge the NILA board members who are here as well, obviously, and the institute board members. Uh, but I have to tell you, um, we have... Uh, the, we have a, a real loss happening here with the folks who are leaving our board at the moment, but we're here to say thank you and, um, and how much we appreciate their work. So first, uh, Phyllis Ramsby, uh, would you please uh, come on up here? has been a, a great board member and hopefully she's going to continue to have a role here, um, a real firecracker for our members. Uh, thank you so much, Phyllis. Uh, <laughs> next is uh, Dara Smith. Before I actually hand this to you, Dara, I want to say what a privilege it is to have had you on the board. Um, you have been a tremendous contributor, uh, and I'm so excited. Uh, as you know, Dara is going to be uh, general counsel at the EEOC. No, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a little brain fart. No, sorry. <laughs> um, no, Dara is going to uh, work at the appellate division. And she is, uh, she has actually said that this is her dream job. How many people get to say that? So, congratulations. Thank you so much for everything you've done for me. Right now. All right. I'm tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. And last and certainly not least, uh, Kathy Butler. So 
Kathy has been a fantastic board member, um, and I mean, you've given 30 years of service to Neela. Um, I guess you've been on the board for how many years? Nine years? Six. Six years? It feels like nine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kathy is tremendous. Uh, Kathy's been our treasurer. She's done everything that has been asked of her and way more than that. And uh, her, her, always, her, her optimism at all of our meetings and always saying onward has really been a great driving force for our board. So thank you, Kathy, so much. Thank you so much. All right, it's my pleasure now to introduce Diane King, who is the acting president of the National Institute for Workers' Rights, which is Neela's partner in advancing workers' rights. Thank you, Linda. Hello, everybody. It's been so wonderful to see you again in person. I'm acting president for Neela's National Institute for Workers' Rights. We've We've rebranded our name and made it a little bit shorter and easier to remember. Um, first, I want to acknowledge that it's difficult times for us. Somebody this morning described the current uh, situation as horrifying trash fire, <laughs> which I thought was <laughs> somewhat descriptive. And, and personally, I've had this fight or flight reaction for a couple of weeks. It's been really intense. And I go back and forth between wanting to hide under a rock and wanting to throw a rock. <laughs> and I have to tell you that, that Today has been really energizing, and you've all made me want to fight again. So I really, really appreciate that. Thank you all. I want to tell you briefly about the Institute. If you don't know about us, um, I think our timing to really take off is, is, is perfect because we are the think tank related to NILA. We can do things that Neela cannot do, um, but we have the same end goal, which is to advance workers' rights. We work on thought leadership. We've been talking and, and doing uh, symposiums on what, is, what are the next steps, how should we change the law. Uh, we've done some really important research, um, helping people defeat summary judgment, talking about how should we talk about forced arbitration um, so that people understand it and are, uh, know, know what and evil it is. Um, we've also done a lot of education and, uh, through the Paul Tobias Scholarship Fund. We have a breakfast Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And we really want all of you to come and learn more about what the Institute does. The last question in the last um, session was talking about toolboxes and tools. And the Institute is a really important toolbox that we all need to think about how to use, and we want your input on that, things that we need to do. And your ideas may have changed in, in the last two weeks even. But if you'll come 8 a.m. on Sunday, not only will you get to brainstorm with us, but you will get the pleasure of seeing our former executive director, Terry Chaw, and meeting our new executive director, Jeffrey Mittman, who both of them are just amazing people. If Neela is Terry Chaw's baby, then um, Neela is... Jeffrey Mittman's teenager, and, and we would like all of you to come. In addition, one of the things I think we need to take away from current times is it's really important to celebrate the good, because these are difficult times. And as part of that, I would like to call Rebecca Salata up to the, up to the stage. I have an award to give Rebecca. Yes, on your left. Oh, right. oh, sorry. Lovely. Rebecca has been the president of the Institute for 100 years or so. <laughs> <laughs> she was the, uh, on the original group that planned it and then put it together, and she's been working tirelessly. And she's stepping down, but she's not going away. But we thought it was a good chance to thank her for all of her amazing work. Rebecca, in recognition of your extraordinary contributions and tireless service as president of the National Institute for Workers' Rights from 2018 to 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you.
And also as part of celebrating the good, the Institute is proud to give its first inaugural Impact for Workers Awards to the Katzman McLean Foundation. And lucky for us, we have the honor of having Stephen Katzman here to accept the award. You know, they have really done amazing, amazing things for the Institute and for Neil, and probably things that none of you know about. Since the inception of Neil and the Institute's scholarship program, they have sponsored the program. They have given or allowed Neil and the Institute to give over 300 CLEs so that people like public interest lawyers and individuals that couldn't otherwise afford to come to the NILA programs can come and receive the incredible education that the rest of us receive. And I can't imagine how many lives you've changed and how many people that you've helped through that. Mr. Kazan, I want to thank you and your foundation for all of the work that you've done for us. to read this whole long, long thank you. <laughs> I'll stipulate you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> do it at the I'll microphone. be in, do it at the microphone. Pardon me? Into recording. the mic. Ah, okay. I'm, I'll be in trouble with Lee if I don't, so I'll do it quickly. Kasman McLean's Partners Foundation, with the deepest gratitude for your leadership, support of the Workers' Rights Advocacy Scholarship Program, and your strong commitment to the legal community and the cause of justice for workers. Impact for Workers Award. We rise, we lead, we celebrate. July 1, 2022. Thank you so much for your leadership. Um, I, I would just like to thank you all uh, for this award. Uh, it, it really uh, strikes a kind of a warm place for me. Uh, when I was seven years old, my family moved into a union co-op sponsored housing project in New York. Uh, when I was a teenager, I played basketball on a union sponsored uh, team. Uh, since 1974, I've led our law firm uh, in its work, and all we do is represent working people uh, who suffer from asbestos-related occupational disease, a lot of them union members, and a lot of them uh, not so fortunate uh, as to be union members. Uh, but this uh, recognition from a group uh, that shares our goals in life is, is really something special. So, uh, again, thank you all, and thanks to the organization uh, for this award. It really does mean a lot to our foundation. Thank you so much for those kind words. Um, so as empowering and, and wonderful as today has been uh, for all of us, uh, being back in person again, we're also holding in our thoughts those in our community that we lost over the past three years. Uh, we've prepared a wonderful video in celebration of the lives and legacies of uh, our fellow heroes of workplace justice. One of the most remarkable things I've noticed during my 19, 18 months at NILA and the Institute is the strong community that we have. You all have built something incredible over the years, and I promise you, as we begin this next phase, that we will make those that we have lost proud of the work we continue to do. One way our community comes together is through your incredible support of NILA's annual gala fundraiser. As you know, this year we're doing it in two parts, this evening in award celebration and tomorrow when we celebrate at our uh, festival. Uh, the work of the gala 
strengthening the mission of empowering workers' rights attorneys, promoting a fair judiciary, and leveling the playing field for all workers. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to our gala supporters for building NILA's influence in our nation's capital, in the courtrooms, and everywhere we can make a difference. As I mentioned this morning, I am incredibly pleased to announce that we are well on our way to our $350,000 annual goal and have already raised over $330,000 from over 220 sponsors to sustain and build NILA's amicus, judicial nominations, legislative and public policy, and affiliate programs. It is my honor to recognize the gala sponsors who contributed at the Founders Circle level, and I'm very pleased to tell you it is quite a long list, so please wait uh, for your applause to the end. We thank, with sincere gratitude and excitement, Korea and Puth, Sue Ellen Eisenberg and Associates, Sanford Heisler Sharp, Alexander Morrison and Fair, uh, excuse me, Alexander Morrison and Fair, Stephen R. Bruce Law Offices, Kathy Butler, Leif Cabraser, Hyman and Bernstein, Nichols Castor, Charleston Bredehoff, Cohen Brown and Nadelhoft, Filipados PLLC, Hawks Quindell, Bailey and Glass, Bernstein and Lipset, Getman, Sweeney and Dunn, Haynes and Haynes, Jim and Joel and Castor, McCracken Law Office, Neela, New Jersey, Outen and Golden, Pitt, McGee, Palmer, Banani, and Rivers, and Tila, the Texas, Lawyers, Texas Employment Lawyers Association. Please join me now in thanking them and all of our gala sponsors for their time. I am pleased to call to the stage now Kathy Butler. I come to you this afternoon as a member of what one might politely call the Old Codger Caucus of NILA. <laughs> so it gives me so much pleasure to recognize Minica Fernando for this Spotlight Award, which is about the future of the organization. They always say that when you have a difficult task to do, the best thing is to give it to the busiest person. And Minica proves this adage is correct. She is not only a partner at Alton and Golden, she is a member of the board of the California Employment Lawyers Association and the co-chair of its legislative committee. But there's more. She's also <laughs> on the board of the Stand Up for Workers PAC and in charge of our communications committee. And there's more. She's on the board of Open Door Legal, a prolific writer, a prolific uh, speaker. She is some, a, a wife, a mother, a daughter, a trusted colleague, and a friend of so many. She, simply put, is a powerhouse. She gets this award because she is someone who sees what the future can be and is already working on it. She sees a future in when work, where workers are respected by companies. She sees a future where workers are always treated with respect and dignity. She sees a future it, where workers are thanked, not punished, for speaking truth to power, because this is what Minica knows. She knows that not only does that make a stronger workplace, it makes fundamentally a stronger United States of America. And, that's, and she knows these changes are not easy. She knows they're hard, but she's already started working on them. That's what's so beautiful. She's only been out of law school since 2010. I mean, by that time, I was I had 30 years of practice. I mean, I, but she's done so much. I can't think of a better person to recognize who embodies what the future of Neela can be than Minica. I'm just 
Thank you, Minica, for being such a bright star in the constellation. It's just great. Uh, Thank you for having the courage to stand up and be counted again and again. Because she is. She's doing the work. You have had the courage to stand up. You are the future of Neela. And we oldsters could not be prouder. Please join me in welcome thanking her for this well-deserved honor. Okay, so I just... Oh, here we go. Minica Fernanda, with deepest gratitude for your distinguished service to the Neela community, Inspiring Leadership and Commitment to Justice for Workers 2022 Spotlight Award. We rise, we lead, we celebrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She kicks ass and takes name. Hi, everybody. This feels very surreal. Not only am I out of my yoga pants and wearing a dress (laughs) and heels for the first time in a really long time, but I was also introduced by a trailblazing Kathy Butler. Um, So, and I'm among so many of you giants here today, so This feels very surreal, but I am so thrilled um, to be here with you in person, finally, to celebrate our community together in what is a a very, very difficult time. Um, But I do want to spend some time today reflecting on family, because you may have noticed I have a lot of family here. If you see little ones running around, those are my people. (laughs) Um, my husband, my son, my mother-in-law, my brother, uh, my sister-in-law, and my niece and my nephew. We're first-generation Im- immigrant <laughs> family, so this is that's how we roll. Um, we do things together, but these these are my rocks. Everything I do is so that my son Adrian, my niece Mila, my nephew Liam. Um, that they grow up in a, in a better world than, than I did and that we, that we are in. Um, and my parents couldn't be here, but as first-generation immigrant, um, they, you know, it goes without saying that they sacrificed everything. They gave everything to us, um, and I really do, I do owe them everything. Um, and then I, of course, have my Out and Golden family here, um, just an inspiring rock star group of lawyers and the kindest, some of the kindest people I know. ONG was the first place that I found so many mentors um, and the place that I found my voice and found my footing as an advocate, um, which has enabled me really to take on the, the biggest, baddest employers without any fear. Um, and then I have so many of my SELA family here um, first time I'm seeing so many SELA folks, and I always say when I went to my first SELA event, I felt like I found my people. Um, I'm so proud of the work that we have done over the years in enacting some of the strongest employment laws in the country. And I'm so honored um, to join the SELA board this year. It's really my privilege. Um, to be a leader of this incredible, incredible organization. And I have my Stand Up for Workers family here. Uh, This group, we are uh, a national PAC that has helped uh, elect congressional, uh, Democrat uh, congressional candidates in the 2020 election. And really, having this group and working towards making Congress blue in 2020. That's what got me through the Trump years. 
Um, and, you know, this, what a revolutionary idea to a group of workers' rights advocates coming together to form a national pact to, to elect candidates who prioritize workers' rights. Um, I would say we're a, a new but formidable bunch, and we're rolling up our sleeves to keep Congress blue in the midterms. Um, and so I'm so grateful to have found my family within this community, but this journey hasn't been easy, and I know that it hasn't been easy for so many of you who are underrepresented within this community. Um, when, it wasn't until I joined out in Golden um, that I had my first female boss, Where's Jenny Schwartz? Um, and, I, and I saw female equity partners, and I saw people of color in, in leadership. And this was in 2015. Um, so that, I think, is, is a problem for our field, um, and it remains a problem, and we have to acknowledge that, and we have to fix that. Um, so to all of the younger lawyers and law students here, um, especially those of you who are black, Latinx, indigenous, Asian, women, immigrants, LGBTQ, or disabled, I want to tell you that in no uncertain terms, you belong here. Um, I, I know that you will have doubts, both internal, external. They may come from colleagues, opposing counsel, judges, mediators, arbitrators. Um, but we need you. This profession desperately needs you. And more importantly, our clients need you because you have felt their pain and you can tell their stories better than anyone else. And they will seek you out because of that. They will trust you more. They will tell you more about themselves. Um, and they will, they'll be more willing to take this leap of faith because with you, because of who you are and what you bring to the table. So embrace that and be unapologetic about who you are and disrupt this notion that there is only one type of successful lawyer because as a first generation South Asian immigrant woman of color, mother, introvert, and somebody who has lived with a disability for more than half her life, let me tell you that that's absolutely not true. Um, and to all of us and everybody here in positions of authority, I think it's incumbent on us to make sure that this community, this family, is safe and inclusive of everyone. Because ultimately, we do need to be a true family um, in order to fight all the challenges that we face today. A week ago today, a radical group of justices two of whom who have very credibly been accused of sexual assault, stripped away a fundamental human right from us. And they made very clear what this court is after next. Our civil rights are on the chopping block. This means that we collectively have to fight harder than ever to preserve our rights. We have to donate, we have to volunteer, we have to do everything possible to elect progressive candidates up and down the ticket, and we have to fight harder than ever for our clients who are the victims of the systems of oppression that allowed this extremist court to exist in the first place. This is truly a defining moment for us as advocates. And as we think about what we're going to do in this moment, I want to leave you with the words of my former client, who I represented in a gender discrimination case against a tech company years ago. She sent me a note minutes after the Dobbs decision came out. She was devastated, but she said, quote, I'm glad lawyers like you exist to provide support and accountability, and hopefully this decision just fuels you all more in the work you're doing because all of it matters. All of it matters. Thank you for letting me be in this fight with you.
Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, it's really great to be here with you all after so long. Um, and I'm really excited and honored to be able to share with you a smidgen of what I know about my friend and colleague, Vicki Nee. Um, I'm Karen Maoki, and I've been on staff with Neela and the Institute since, and I looked this up, the price of gas in the Bay Area was $2.16. <laughs> so, I don't know if that counts as the old Codger Club, but it's getting close. That was a long time ago. This does mean that I had the great good fortune, or I have still had the great good fortune of working with Vicki in various capacities um, for about 15 years. Um, and her, her accomplishments and contributions to our Neela family are many, and they are impressive, um, including being on our board for 12 years, being a co-chair of our Amicus Advisory Council for nine years, um, and she's been doing fantastic work over at Public Justice for over 20 years. Um, and the list goes on and on. Um, sorry, Vicki, I'm not going to name them all. But <laughs> one of the biggest reasons I am so thrilled that we are honoring Vicki today um, is that she's not a limelight person. She does not seek out recognition or attention or talk just to talk. Uh, and yet, with her very clear-eyed and thoughtful knack for identifying the heart of complex issues, she can turn the conversation of a room full of lawyers, which is no easy feat, especially when bylaws are, are involved. Um, and on our board, she was the queen of saying, we don't need a motion for that. And she was actually right. <laughs> um, for me, it was a pleasure to watch her work uh, on the board and in so many other capacities. Um, she is a rare creature who has uh, the ability to be just as adroit at dissecting a complex substantive amicus issue as she does working through an organizational strategic planning process. Um, and this skill, this breadth, this depth of knowledge can easily go unnoticed, um, but it is part of the bedrock of what makes Neela what it is today, is having folks like her to hold us up, not only in the substance of what we do, but as an organization. Um, on a more personal note, the, the words that come to mind for me when I think about Vicki are witty, wise, thoughtful, resilient, and strong, so freaking strong. Um, in the face of immense challenge, she responds with perspective, with humor. Um, I love how much we laugh when we hang out. Um, and just a tremendous sense of grace. Um, and it is a real honor for me to be a part of her circle, um, and I just wanted to share one of my favorite moments, I think, um, so our bromance developed qu quite slowly, actually, <laughs> because um, she had been on the board for several years, and we would always hang out at board meetings and NILA events, and even though we live in the same city, we would never hang out for some reason, when we were actually both in California. Um, but back in 2017, after the annual convention in San Antonio, we went to go see Wonder Woman together, um, at, we, and, which was really fun. But she was like, well, my kids get to see it this weekend, so I want to see it too. And so she always had her family on her mind, even as she was you know, working through a convention room full of folks and uh, going through all the substantive sessions. But that, that moment, um, I think, was the moment we both kind of figured out, like, duh, why don't we hang out like when we're actually in Oakland together? Um, and since then, she's been a tremendous mentor professionally, um, but as a friend, just been an incredible source of support um, and inspiration for me. So I am tremendously honored to be able to uh, honor Vicki today. And I would like to invite you up to accept your award. 
Victoria W. Nee. <laughs> with deepest gratitude for your distinguished leadership within the NILA community and extraordinary contributions to workplace justice, we rise, we lead, we celebrate July 1, 2022. <laughs> I'm truly touched by this award and the fact that my friend Karen was able to present it. Um, I uh, almost didn't make it here today. Uh, as Karen said, I just live across the bridge um, in Oakland, but um, there were a couple of obstacles that fell in my way, and it wasn't at all clear that I would be here. Um, but NILA lawyers, what do we do? We fight obstacles. Um, we are always fighting injustices. We are always rising. We are always leading. And we are overcoming those long odds. And so it's in that spirit today that I'm here uh, with all of you to uh, uh, live that NILA spirit, fighting spirit, and I'm so pleased to be able to see you all in one place um, and uh, be here in person. Um, it was the highlight of my professional life to serve on the board of NILA. And um, I'm very grateful to be in your community. Um, and I will think of this award um, and as a reminder to keep that fighting spirit. So thank you all. and. Take care. Good evening, everyone. When I finally had the epiphany that my life's calling was to be an employee advocate, I had to figure out to whom I should try to hitch my star. So in my usual bashful way, <laughs> I cold called a venerated former judge turned civil rights advocate and asked her for guidance. She responded without hesitation with one name, Joseph Garrison. I forged ahead, of course, and called Joe. Not only did he take his call, my call from me, a perfect stranger, but he took the time to share with me his passion for the work of the employee advocate. And then, even though the firm was not hiring, he invited me to meet with him and his partners. And so began the journey of me becoming one of the luckiest people on earth, an attorney at the Garrison Law Firm. I will never forget my first NILA conference as a garrison law attorney shortly before my official start date there. We were in Puerto Rico, and I was wearing my name tag that displayed the name of the firm. And I mean this. It was at this point I came this close to getting the feeling of what it would be like to be related to, to a celebrity. Because every single person I met at that conference, from Florida all the way to, to California, would look at my name tag and say, oh, you work with Joe Garrison. Oh, you're a member of Joe Garrison's law firm. Oh, how lucky you are. And how right they were. Joe was and still is a mentor to me and to everyone in our firm. He imbues each attorney who works for him with a practical and human approach to employee advocacy that you would never be able to acquire in a treatise. In the early years, Joe met with me regularly to counsel me on my cases. The brainstorming sessions we had would shape my approach 
to employee advocacy to this day. In one of those cases, I was faced with a seemingly impossible situation. I had, you know, one of those cases where the client's plight was so real and so horrific, but the legal claims were so weak and so tenuous. And I went to Joe, and he asked me one fundamental question. Who are, who are the, her allies? And the answer to that question, that seemingly innocuous question, who are our allies, ended up being the ticket to success for this particular client. Fast forward 15 years later to today, and I can tell you that the only reason that I am here at this platform right now, as a member of the NILA board, as a frequent speaker at NILA's conferences, with a career that I would not give up if I won the lottery tomorrow, is because of Joe. I'm just scratching the surface, of course, but I only have three minutes, not three days. <laughs> so I want to conclude by sharing with you some observations that Joe's colleagues have made about Joe. Robert Richardson, Joe's associate, who grew up as a baby lawyer with Joe and was with our firm for, I think, 20, 20 25 years, as now a magistrate judge. This is what Rob Richardson has to say. Thank, oh, obviously he was a member of the NILA board and all these wonderful other things. Thank you for teaching me the right way to practice law and for serving as an excellent role model and mentor to so many of us. But most of all, Thank you for being such a great friend. Congratulations on your well-deserved recognition. I have more. Ethan Levin Epstein, Joe's partner for many, many, many years. Joe is unusual because what you see is what you get. He is as straight as straight can be and never has his hidden agenda. Integrity to a fault, some might say, incorrectly. Steve Fitzgerald, there are legions of employees who are rightfully, enthusiastically grateful to Joe Garrison for delivering to them a measure of justice that they never would have been possible without him. We have had the pleasure of working with Joe on a daily basis, and we have even more reason to be grateful. As a mentor to new associates, a colleague to his partners, or a boss to his devoted staff, Joe's wisdom, generosity, and unfailing humanity inspires us all and teaches us the best how to navigate the challenges of this profession in a manner that is decent and just. John Silbert, retired judge, we get a lot of those in our firm. John Silbert, retired judge, decided to write a short poem. It's almost a haiku. More than 50 years as a friend and colleague, a pioneer and titan in the field of employee rights uh, litigation, the embodiment of everything our firm stands for. That's John Silbert. Josh. Goodbaum. Joe has modeled for me how to be a devoted advocate both for our firm's clients and for move, the movement as a whole. But just as importantly, he has also modeled for me how to strive for balance, to spend time with family and friends, to nurture hobbies, and to take vacations. Because we can't fight for other people if we lose our sense of ourselves. Amanda Dematis, our newest partner, this is what she had to say. I had no lawyers in my family, yet my dream for as long as I could remember was to be a lawyer. That in large part is due to Joe Garrison employing a 20-something-year-old kid back in 1977. That kid is my mother. She is Joe's employee with the longest tenure, this year clocking in at 45 years. That loyalty, commitment, and true family environment that has been true for all of these years is thanks to Joe Garrison. His passion, generosity, and approachability inspire me and countless others to advocate for employees. I thought it would be fun to also share with you one remark by one of Joe's adversaries. She's in-house counsel now at Gartner, but for many years was Joe's fierce adversary in many of her cases at a major law firm. Joe developed a mediation practice where he worked hard to establish himself not as a a plaintiff's lawyer who mediated, but as a well-respected, knowledgeable, credible mediator. Having spent many years as Joe's adversary, I began to use him to mediate cases, most of which settles in ways in which made each side feel heard. In a case in which Joe was my adversary, he suggested that we self-mediate. 
It was a fascinating experience sitting at the opposite end of the conference room from my mediator, who was actually my adversary in this self-mediation. We settled the matter in a way that both of our clients viewed as a success. Joe's out-of-the-box thinking was on full display in the situation and worked to the advantage of all involved. And finally, I want to share with you the remarks from Connecticut District Judge Janet Arderton. This is what she had to say about you, Joe. Neil's decision to honor my longtime law partner and friend is simply brilliant. When I joined his young firm in 1978, the field of employees with employment rights barely existed. Yes, we did civil rights and labor cases, but with Joe's amazing intellectual creativity and tenacity, old wine that is, traditional common law doctrines got put into new bottles shaped by employees' accounts of workplace mistreatment and financial disaster from being fired. His clients became part of that exciting wine aging process, primarily in state courts. His dedication to the rightfulness of his client's entitlement to relief, I think, returned a sense of personhood and empowerment to countless people. And as he won these cases, management too learned new respect for both roles of their employees and for Joe. A really great compliment to him was how many corporate executives sought out Joe for representation when their heads were on the block. It was my great opportunity to work with Joe for nearly 16 years. It continues to be my great honor to be called him my good friend. This is from Janet Arderton. Bravo, Joe, and bravo, Neela. So I am speaking to you today as Joe's partner, a singular honor that I've enjoyed for many years now. I will never forget the pride I felt the first time I uttered those words. I am Joe Garrison's partner. And the reason why I can't forget it is because I feel that same sense of awe today. And it is with deep sense of pride and honor that on behalf of Mila, I present Joe Garrison, a giant among giants, with its Lifetime Achievement Award. Joe Garrison, with deepest gratitude for a lifetime of distinguished service to the NILA community, extraordinary contributions to the field of plaintiff's employment law, and commitment to justice for workers. We rise, we lead, we celebrate. I probably shouldn't say anything after that. <laughs> but since I am uh, being praised for giving advice, um, and I also have the title of historian of the convention committee, and having attended virtually every convention of NILA, I followed the interesting issues of the dress code, <laughs> and I want to help for now and in the future. You know, like me, you can wear a blazer and a t-shirt <laughs> as a man. You can wear casual or dressy clothing as a woman. Their rule it really is, there is no rule. Be comfortable is what we want. And now I'll say what I was going to say in the first place. <laughs> uh, in a lot of big sporting events, the, the person who wins an award is often being asked by a reporter, how do you feel? I feel like being given this award is as if I won the US Open in tennis. My name would be engraved with other wonderful award winners from the past and it would remain with the talented lawyers who will receive this award in the future. I am very honored by this and I thank Neela very much. Historically, I was among the early group of folks that Paul Tobias recruited and whose life changed for the better because of the opportunity to work with Neela. For the skeptics in the audience who might think uh, 
or question my tenure, I brought my proof. Neela's first convention. <laughs> At North Lake Tahoe, a shirt that still fits me, that's a good reason for wearing a shirt. <laughs> and then the second one in Cape Cod. Joe Golden, Joe Golden, who was a great NILA lawyer, and I somehow were the initial convention planners. And I have always been proud of those early beginnings. But I want to fast forward 32 years to today. If lawyers were ranked by the difficulties of their jobs, we as employment lawyers representing employees would certainly find ourselves ranked as having some of the most difficult of legal jobs. Many of us face radically conservative judges and let me expand that term of radically conservative to the Supreme Court. Our clients often have lived paycheck to paycheck, and the paychecks have just stopped. And there is, of course, more on the side of difficulty. But there is another side, and it is a bright side. When we tell people what we do, they may not like lawyers, but they love us. When people come to our offices, they almost always leave better off than when they came in. We help people. We help people. NILA contributes a lot to our successes. The NILA exchange, the amicus briefs in important cases, the research the Institute does, the conventions, webinars, seminars, trainings. NILA is a remarkably excellent organization. Be generous in your support, whether by donations or by volunteering or just by participating. You will gain far more than you are giving. We've had to fight our battles in the past in times like this, but be optimistic. We are on the right side. So my hope and uh, wishes for you all is that these two words can help you guide your daily life, generosity and optimism. And as far as I'm concerned, thank you again very much. Thank you so much. Let's have another round of applause for all of our honorees. Thank you for being so generous. Thank you. I want to salute all of you for the work that you do every day to fight for justice. I look forward to seeing you at the annual reception and then again tomorrow morning and for those of you who are participating in the Tobias 5K, meet upstairs in, hotel lobby, in the hotel lobby at 7 and join us at 8 a.m. for the Members Forum. Thank you all. See you soon.